But I think the best news in this report was the average hourly earnings, which is a measure of kind of wages and salaries. And it was about as expected, as you said, uh, it was 4.1 percent. But I think if you look at the subcategories, what's interesting is uh, when we first came out of the pandemic, it was quite hard to get people to do many of the service jobs. Uh, that includes kind of hospitality, hotel work, restaurant work. Um, and now uh, employers are not having to pay significant premiums uh, and are still able to attract significant number of people in these less skilled jobs. So what that means is there's probably not going to be as much uh, pressure on service wages. Mm. And seeing that the average hourly earnings is getting in a range that's more consistent with what we'd want to see for a 2% inflation target. Yeah, we've had so much Fed speak this week, and I want to get to that with you. But first, I have to ask one more question on this, because we were discussing it with Steve Wiesman yesterday. Um, Rick Santelli has been all over it as well, and that's the role that immigration is playing in the labor data, too. Rick Santelli had Casey Mulligan on, and he pointed to a part-time jobs category, the fact that so much of the gains are happening there, and that there's actually less employment per person, and the role that perhaps immigration is playing in that, and, and is playing in the wage growth trajectory that we're seeing play out as well. Uh, I think that's right, that uh, we were probably underestimating how quickly the U.S. population was growing, because we were underestimating uh, how many foreign-born workers were in the United States. And as a result, uh, many of those individuals are going into hospitality, restaurant, hotel type of work, where we were seeing real shortages uh, when we first came out of the pandemic, but we're no longer seeing shortages, in part because they're filling many of those jobs.